One of the coolest things about this style of building is that you can assemble entire structures that don't rely on metal fasteners such as screws or bolts. Timber framing relies on the geometry of the joinery along with wooden pegs to keep things together. Our tiny timber frame building requires 32 wooden pegs. Now you could buy those, they offer them commercially, but what fun is that? Let's take a look at how I make them instead. This is a piece of green red oak. Um, it's just split right out of the log and we've split it down to just a little bit over an inch by an inch. Now you could use any hardwood. You just need it to be harder than the pine, which is what uh, the, the beams are made out of. This is about 11 inches long. Our beams are only 6 inches long, so we're going to have a little bit of excess to work with. To shape these, I'm going to use this tool here, which is my spoon mule. It's very similar um, to a shave horse, except that it's designed for holding wooden spoons and, and carving wooden spoons instead. Um, I don't have a shave horse, so this, this is what I use to make the dowels, to make the pegs. These jaws, uh, use your feet and you can pinch like this and this holds this in here nice and secure. So the first thing is to use um, the draw knife to bring this down real close to an inch by inch square. So once we have it down to an inch by an inch, we rotate it and we're going to take the corners off to make it an octagon. Now we're just going to clean things up. We want to keep some of those sharp edges because that helps the holding power. But here we're going to just kind of smooth, smooth things out where they go from the center down to the point. That'll help it go through the holes better. There. That's a finished dowel. Okay, all 32 pegs are made now. Now that they're done, we're going to turn attention over to drilling the holes in the beams. Um, finding the location of the holes uh, is a little bit arbitrary. You can, you can sort of choose. Um, what I have found works well is on my framing square, if I hold it with the inch and a half side flush with the housing and the two inch side away from the corner, there's this little hole right here in the center that I can use to put a mark. And that spot works pretty well for all of our corner braces. For the ones that are not coming in at an angle, for like the door posts, we just go centered. So I'll find the center of this joint here. We're at four and a half, so I'll go at two and a quarter and come up an inch and a half. So our hole is going to be somewhere in that neighborhood. We found our spot, um, our mark to drill the hole, and now we're going to use this auger bit. This has kind of a screw tip on the front. We're going to set that right on the mark. And then I have this jig that I made, which helps us stay vertical all the way through. So we, we're going to set that on here, and I'm going to stand on it and go ahead and drill all the way down through. Now something that is important is that I don't want to drill all the way through the other side because if I do I'm going to blow out a bunch of the wood on that side so what I do is I drill until just this spur is sticking out just a little bit then we'll flip the beam over and we'll drill back the other way which keeps it from making a big tear out. Now you may be wondering why I didn't have our corner brace in place when I drilled this first hole. And the reason is we're going to use a technique called draw boring.
Draw boring is where you drill one set of holes through the top here and the bottom, and then you place the tenon inside the joint, and you use the drill bit just to mark the center. You pull out the tenon, and we're going to offset this hole towards the shoulder just about an eighth of an inch or maybe three sixteenths. Because what that will do is when we put the tenon back in, these holes are going to be slightly out of alignment. And when we drive our peg through, that's going to take and pull this corner brace nice and tight into the mortise. So it's just going to lock things together. So what I need to do um, is go back through the rest of the beams and drill the primary holes. And then when we go to set up, we're going to uh, handle drilling the tenants. So let's get on that now.